Hey guys, welcome to Kluji Tech Time. I'm David, and today we're talking all about the Mavic Air and the new firmware update that DJI just released a few days ago. It's got six fixes of important issues, as well as one new feature for the remote control that you're definitely going to want to know about. Stick around, and we'll dive into all the details. <music> Thanks for sticking around guys. Today we're talking all about the Mavic Air and the new firmware update that just came out a few days ago from DJI. It's version 01.00.0500, has six fixes for some pretty important issues as well as one brand new feature for the remote control you're definitely going to want to know about. Before you install this new firmware update for the Mavic Air, you are going to need version 4.3.0 of DJI Go 4. Once you have that installed, then you can think about installing this new firmware update. Now, I did it via DJI Go 4 myself, but you can also use DJI Assistant 2 on your computer. If you have problems doing it through DJI Go 4 or you have problems doing it through DJI Assistant on your computer, then you can try the opposite. I would always suggest that you turn everything off and then turn it back on and give it another try first. Now, as far as I'm aware, they have done an update to both the remote control and the aircraft, but they have not done an update to the battery itself. So you won't have to worry about rotating each of your batteries through. Now, if you find something different than that, definitely let me know in the comments down below. All right, so let's dive into the six issues that they have fixed. This first one is an important issue, and it's one that I've seen over time, multiple different videos on YouTube where this has been an issue. I'm gonna show you a quick video that demonstrates this particular issue. It's from a YouTuber named Captain Drone. If you're not familiar with Captain Drone, you definitely need to go check him out. He's putting out content all the time and he does a fantastic job. This is a quick snippet from one of his videos where he was doing an active track and his Mavic Air tried to attack him. <laughs> Various different videos that have a very similar kind of feel where it's doing an active track and then all of a sudden it just zooms down at the subject that it's tracking and almost hits them. I hope nobody's been hurt with it, but I'm really glad to see that DJI is addressing it in this firmware update. And if you use the active track feature on your Mavic Air, I highly recommend that you consider installing this firmware update if for nothing else just for this particular issue right here. DJI says that they have fixed the issue where the aircraft behaved abnormally when it misidentified a subject in active track. So hopefully that's fixed and no more issues like Captain Drone ran into will be popping up. The next one is they have fixed the issue during return to home where the aircraft continued to fly backward when it sensed obstacles both in front and behind. Well that certainly could be another safety issue where you know if you've got objects in front and behind and it's continuing to move backwards well that's certainly a problem. Uh, it could crash the drone itself or if that object behind is a person then it could run into them and hurt them. So the next item is they have fixed an issue where the time displayed on photos was incorrect. Now, it certainly doesn't seem to be like a safety sort of issue, but if you need your uh, timestamps to be absolutely correct, well, you're definitely gonna wanna uh, look at installing this one as well. Fix the issue where the aircraft flight distance was still restricted despite the distance limit being disabled in DJI Go 4. I haven't ran into this particular issue, but I can see how it would be very frustrating if you were, so I'm sure that if you're running into that particular issue, you are very happy to see this in this firmware update. Next item is they fixed the issue where the abnormal current warning appeared too frequently in some situations. Sounds like that was probably just a false positive on that abnormal current issue, but that would certainly be worrying to me. And if I was getting that warning a lot, I certainly wouldn't want to fly my aircraft because I would be afraid of it crashing. So uh, for those people running into that issue, I'm glad to see this one fixed for them. The last item that they say they are fixing is that they fixed an issue where the aircraft could not land due to issues with the remote controller control sticks. I'm reading a little bit between the lines on that one, but it seems like you probably were still able to land the aircraft by using the button on the remote control or the soft button in DJI Go 4. It was just the down stick not being able to allow it to land, which would certainly be frustrating if you're the one running into that, but it sounds like you should still be able to land. But I'm glad to see that they are fixing this for anybody that was running into this. Before we get into the firmware update for the remote controller that adds a new feature that I think is fantastic, have you run into any of those six issues that are documented in the release notes for this firmware update? If so, I'm curious to hear you know, the extent of the problem that you were running into and whether this firmware update has fixed it for you or not. Now to the firmware update they have added for the remote controller that I think is fantastic. Let me read it to you and then I'll show you what we're talking about. Added the ability to adjust the camera parameters, 
press and hold the customizable button and toggle the gimbal dial to adjust. What they're talking about there is they are talking about this right customizable button right here. With your right index finger, you will press and hold it. And with your left index finger, you will use the dial, the one that adjusts the uh, gimbal up and down. Once you press the button there, this dial then changes behavior and it then changes to the exposure it adjusts the exposure if you are in auto mode it changes the ev so the exposure value so it changes it one step at a time every time you rotate it so you go left and it'll go down a little bit you go right and it will toggle up a little bit now if you rock and hold it it doesn't just keep going you have to rock it one at a time and it moves one step at a time now for the automatic mode i said it changes the EV, the exposure value. If you're in manual mode in your camera, it adjusts the shutter speed. So again, when you press and hold the customizable key and then you rock the button, it will adjust the shutter speed by one value. Now this feature is something that is really important and I'm really glad they're finally bringing it to the Mavic Air. And I hope that they bring it to the Spark at some point in the future as well. Being able to adjust it from the remote control really just simplifies things a whole bunch. DJI does say that this firmware update will adjust some of your settings back to the defaults. So if those settings that you have in DJI Go are important for your flights, you will want to make a note of those before you do the firmware update and then go reapply them after the firmware update. Things like the max distance and the max height and some of your camera settings will get reset back to the factory defaults. So I highly recommend you keep track of those and make sure to update them before you go back for your first flight. I have flown four batteries worth of flights with this firmware update and everything has worked well for me. Now I'm just one person, one aircraft. I can't vouch for everybody. I know that there's probably people out there that are running into some sort of issues, but uh, for me personally, everything was working great. I didn't test every single feature, of course, but just in normal usage, those four flights worked really well for me. So that is firmware version 01.00.0500. I highly recommend that you take a look at those particular details that were released. There's a couple items that I think are safety issues. And if you're using those sorts of features, I think you definitely want to contemplate whether you want to install this or not. I think that it's probably worth it for those particular items. But what do you think? Are you planning to install it? If you've already installed it, are you having success with it or are you having additional problems? Let us know in the comments down below. If you found this video useful, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and hit that notify button if you are so inclined so that you don't miss any of these videos that come out so that you can be up to date on the latest. And also catch me on my Twitter, Facebook and Instagram where I also put out updates even more frequently so that you can have the latest and greatest. Hope to see you on another video very soon. Get out and go fly it. Enjoy the beautiful weather if you have it and I'll see you on another one soon. Ciao!